As Londoners are encouraged to be outdoors more through walking and cycling, you may be surprised to learn that some of our public spaces don't belong to the public at all. It means you can be breaking rules without realising and it could get you into trouble, as Helen Drew found out for herself. Londoners have never needed their outdoor public spaces more than this year. But a lot of those areas aren't really public at all, although you wouldn't necessarily know it. Until, that is, you do something. At that moment, we're interrupted by security. This is private property. Because if you do something that's not allowed by the owners of a space, like filming, you're often moved on quickly. And outside City Hall belongs to More London, owned by the Kuwaiti Sovereign Wealth Fund. But they don't own the grass. Filming restrictions are just one of many rules. Things like having a picnic, things like riding a bike, skateboarding. Um, you know, people who are homeless um, just sitting down could be told to move out of this space. And nowhere does it say what the rules are, where to find out about them. There's no transparency. From Nine Elms in Battersea to the Olympic Park, almost all of London's major developments in recent years have led to the privatisation of public spaces. Tell us, where are we permitted to stand? We met a former government advisor at a privately owned public space near Moorgate and again were asked to move. The advantage of a well-run, generous, inclusive, privately owned public space is the quality of the maintenance because local authorities don't have the budgets that they, they used to have. The problem with parks and, and, and public spaces, they're not a statutory surface, so when, uh, when we're under pressure right now, they don't get the money. City Hall has launched a consultation to ensure the only rules these spaces have are for safety. But it won't apply to any existing spaces, only new developments. Helen Drew, BBC London.